had time to get uh, used to this weather, the humidity here, and it, it, so it's been a great time. Nice. Uh, I don't want to bring up bad things. Your coach obviously had some bad luck last time he tried to come here. Were you concerned at all? Like, what if that happens to me? What does that What does that change for me? Uh, definitely always a concern, but uh, no matter what, I'm ready to I'm ready to go come out here to fight. You know, so it's like coach or not, I'd be ready to fight. Uh, it's more worried about myself, just making sure that I'm okay. But we kept our camp small. Uh, it's just me, Dean Thomas, and Jose Shorty Torres. So it's like that's our crew, and we uh, work, we work with other people occasionally, but it's mostly just us. Very cool. Your last win. How important was that to you to kind of just get back on track? You know, there was all this kind of hype building behind you, and then you, you have a setback. How important was that to just kind of prove to yourself, hey, I'm, I'm still that person everybody thought I was? Uh, it's just a stepping stone, really. It still wasn't the fight I necessarily wanted. I wanted to be able to do more damage, so I still wasn't uh, happy with that last fight. So uh, just hoping to move forward and uh, hopefully show you the best Jillian Roberts in this next fight. And obviously you're so young, and you're already, like, tied to these records, like all-time records and things. Is that kind of blow you away a little bit to think like I'm already be having my name tagged with these kind of all-time greats uh to see that I broke Ronda Rousey's record was absolutely mind-blowing to me because I feel like she's just a pioneer for women in this sport so that was really like a huge step for me but uh it's really just the beginning like I look at Charles Oliveira he has 14 I'm trying to break that record <laughs> I like it right? so talk about the matchup you got here how much did you know about her ahead of the matchup how do you think your skills match up uh, I've watched her over the years, and uh, I believe that she's going to come out uh, strong and hard and fast, and she always throws everything into every single punch and kick, and that's why she has a lot of TKOs or knockouts. But um, I feel like it's a perfect matchup for me, honestly. If you look at the Cynthia Cabello fight, it's pretty much exactly like my game plan. <laughs> right. Last thing for me, give me, the, give me the goals here. I mean, obviously you want to get a victory, but, I mean, are, at your young age, are you worried about, like, where you, where you find yourself in the rankings? You know, are people talking about you as a title contender? Or are you thinking about, i got to get a submission because I want to break those records? I mean, other than just win, what are, what are the goals you want to accomplish here? Um, obviously, the belt's always a goal, but no matter what, I just love this life. I love being able to compete. I love that I get paid to fight and that I can live off of it. So that's really just enough for me. So I'm just happy to do this. What's it been like training in Florida, given that's been probably one of the states where it seems like the hardest around the current climate? Um, it was probably hit the hardest, but it was also like nobody, like there wasn't like a real lockdown ever in Florida. Shocking. <laughs> yeah, shocking. <laughs> but um, yeah, we like I said, we have a small team where uh, Dean Thomas, he has a house in Port St. Lucie. Jose Shorty Torres lives with him, and then he'll fly out any fighters, or we've worked with a couple other people through the camp. But it's we have a small team and just like a unique situation where it's not, uh, it hasn't been too much of a worry. Who have you been sparring with given the fact that you left? APT, which was of course a massive gym, and now you're, like you said, a small team right now. Uh, well, obviously, Shorty is a huge part of my camp, and um, we've been traveling. Like, uh, Dean went up to St. Louis to help Tyron a lot this camp, so I was up there working with Kelly D'Angelo, who's an Invicta, and also at Gambler's Jiu Jitsu, I have Amanda Aliquin, who's a world champion black belt, who I've been able to roll with. So I've been getting good work everywhere. Did you just get your black belt? Did you learn something? <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, it was 100% unexpected. My first day out of quarantine here in Abu Dhabi, uh, Dean texted me. He's like, come up to my room. I have something to give you. And I went up there, and he surprised me with that. So I was like, kept my cool for a second there, and then I was like walking through the hallway just sobbing with a black belt in my hand after. <laughs> Is that still the highlight of this trip, even if you do win? Because I remember when Tyron got his belt in the octagon, his black belt, it just seems like it meant more to him than the actual win. Uh, yeah, it probably is. Honestly, that's up in the uh, list of accomplishments of like making it to the UFC, and then the next would probably be like the title shot or for the belt. You know, like uh, there's not really like you know, it's like college where you don't get a degree or something. So this is that degree for me. It's like I finally earned that and finally earned the respect from my coach there. Cool. Are we done? Good. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>